Welcome to Mr. Hamilton's Math Bites. This video is on operations with radicals. Here are the goals we're going to look at today. We want to know what a radical is, a mixed radical, and what an entire radical is. We also want to reduce and simplify a single radical. We want to multiply mixed and entire radicals using the distributive property for polynomials. We'll see how that comes out later. And we want to add and subtract radicals. Well, you might be asking, what is a radical? Um, I've heard it talked about in my parents' generation when they talk about something being cool, but surely you're not still using that as a word meaning cool, and we're definitely not. Uh, a radical is a square cube or a high root, higher root. So for example, a radical might be something like, if I can find my pen here, root 4. That is a radical. You might also have something like the third root of 7, or the fourth root of 29. I hope you get the picture. The radical symbol is simply this, the square root symbol. And we can add other numbers in front of it. Notice it's not written like a coefficient, it's written kind of like an exponent in front of it to represent if it's a higher root than 2. An entire radical is a radical with a coefficient 1. Entire radical such as root 8. The coefficient there is like there's a 1 there. You don't need to write it. That's the same as just saying, well, it's root 8. Another example of that might be root 5 or root 2,900. Those are all entire radicals. A mixed radical, on the other hand, just like a mixed number, has a number out front. It has a coefficient other than 1. <clears throat> so, for example, it might have something like uh, 2 root 8, or uh, 7 root 5, or negative 29 root 2900. That's a mixed radical. Which brings us to a little step here. and We want to figure out what these different things are. So take a moment and use your calculator and calculate each one of these different things, or if you can in your, in your head do that, and see if you can figure out what the answers might be and how the one column would compare to the other column. I hope it was relatively straightforward for you. Root 4 times root 4 is just 2 times 2, which is 4. Root 81 times root 81 was 9 times 9, which is equal to 81. Root 225 times root 225 was 15 times 15, which was 225. Root 25 times 4 was 5 times 2, which was 10. And then things got a little more difficult. You probably weren't able to do the last two in your head. Root 12 is actually something that is a decimal. So you might get something like um, root 12 times 3, which was approximately equal to 10.392. Or you might have found it exactly equal to 6 root 3, depending on how you calculated the answer. Root 23 times root 21. Could be written out as root 23 times not root 121, not root 21, root 121. So it's times 11, and that would be exactly equal to 11 root 23, or approximately equal to 52.754. Now the thing over here is that these are all the same answers. Well, why are they the same answer if these look different? Well, it has to do with some of the properties of radicals. And so what did you notice? Take a minute, pause, and write about what you noticed about the result in each row. And what conclusion can you make about your observations? I hope you were able to notice that really what it is, is it comes down to the fact that if I have root A times root B, that's the same as root A times B. So I can write that out. Either way. So the properties of radicals that we have then are that. Root A times root B is equal to root A times B. I'm not going to write a multiplication sign between them because two letters beside each other means multiplication. It's also true when I have radicals that are divided. So if I have a radical of A divided by a radical of B, same thing works here. I can write that out as the square root of A over B, all under the radical sign. And the last property that we need to mention is this. If 
I have C times root A, where C is a coefficient and A is the value under the radical sign, so I have a mixed radical, and I multiply it by another mixed radical, that's going to be equal to C times B times root AB. So we combine the A and the B, the values that are under the radical, and we combine the C and the D, the values that are in front of the radical. Those are important properties. You might want to just put a box around that or a star beside that because we're going to use those properties throughout your work, practice questions that you do, and through this lesson. Now, the first thing we want to do is reduce or simplify a radical. And that has to do with just a single radical. And the steps we're going to do are shown above. I'm going to walk you through those steps. If you want to pause and read those over, you can. But I think you're going to catch on fairly quickly. So for root 8, what I can do is I want to find the largest perfect square that is a factor of the number under the radical. Well, the largest perfect square would be 4. If you think about that, the perfect squares are going to be um, 1, 4, and 1 doesn't, we can't really factor out a 1, that doesn't change anything. We also have 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, and 144. That takes us up to 12. So we could go on above that as well, but typically we'll see those perfect squares that we can factor out. In this case, it's the perfect square of 4. So root 4 times root 2. Well, we know that can be written as root 4 times root 2. And we know that has to be 2. And we're left over with just a root 2. So we've made this entire radical to be simplified into a mixed radical. Let's do the same thing for root 50. Root 50 can be written as the largest perfect square is 25. And again, you can write it out as root 25 times root 2. So we have that root 2 again. So this just becomes 5 root 2. Root 180 might seem a little more intimidating to you, but take a moment, pause it, and see if you can solve what that would be. Did you get it? Let's see. The largest perfect square of 180 is, is it 9? Let's try 9. Some of you are going, no, no, no. Hold up with me a second. Let's see how this works. If we went 9, 9 times 20, that would give me root 9 times root 20, which would give me 3 times root 20, but I could still take, I could simplify the root 20. So 3 times root, this would be 4 and a 5. And we could go 3 times root 4 times root 5, which would give me 3 times 2 times root 5, which would give me 6 root 5. Did we take the largest perfect square of the radical sign originally? No, we didn't. The largest perfect square, if you actually found it, was root 36. And this becomes root 36 times 5. Well, that just becomes root 36 times root 5. And that just becomes 6 root 5. So, I wanted to point out here that even if you don't take out the largest perfect square initially, you can still recognize that we still had a perfect square that we could take out. So don't get too worked up if you don't get the largest perfect square initially. Always check your radical and see if it still has a perfect square allowed that can be taken out. All right, let's look at multiplying radicals now. When we multiply two radicals, we multiply again the, the coefficients, and then we multiply the values under the radical sign. So in this case, 2 times 3. And then root 3 times root 6. That's what we're going to do here. That just gives me 6. And then root 3, I multiply the 3 and the 6. And I get root 18. Well, root 18 has a perfect square. And so we get 6. We can break that down into 9 times 2. Well, this just becomes 6 times root 9 times root 2. And root 9 is 3. I'm just putting a dot there to mean multiplication just to keep things shorter and more succinct. So we get 18 root 2. For the second one now, we have to multiply this entire coefficient, if you will, by the value in the first, by the first value in the set of brackets, and by the value in the second 
part of the brackets. So we go ahead and we go 2 root 3 times 4. So we're going to go 2 times 4. We're going to multiply those whole numbers together times root 3. And then again, we're going to multiply the whole numbers together in this second value in the brackets. So 2 root 3 times 5 root 3. We're going to add 2 times 5 times root 3 times root 3. Well, this just becomes 8 root 3 plus 10. And root 3 times root 3 is root 9. I can't simplify root 3 on the, the first value, first term, but I can in the second term here because this is root 9. And root 9 is just 3. So that gives me 8 root 3 plus 30. Now for this last one. We want to multiply every term in the first set of brackets by every term in the second set of brackets. So we multiply this term by each of these two terms. And then we want to multiply the second term by each of these two terms. And I'm going to do that as shown. Some of you might pick up on the fact that these are really the same two things, but with a plus sign and a minus sign between them. Maybe it might look like a difference of squares. So let's see. 2 root 2 times 2 root 2. Again, the order of multiplication doesn't matter. I've, I've gone back and forth a little bit here just to get you comfortable with the fact that it doesn't matter the order we multiply. 2 root 2 times 2 root 2. Then we want to multiply the 2 root 2 times 3 root 3, but it's a negative 3 root 3, so we're going to go minus 2 root 2 times 3 root 3. Then we want to add 3 root 3 times 2 root 2. And then just going to go down one line here for the last term. And then that we have 3 root 3 times negative 3 root 3. So we're going to subtract 3 root 3 times 3 root 3. That looks like a mess. Well, let's take one term at a time. Let's look at this first term first and see how this simplifies. 2 root 2 times 2 root 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Root 2 times root 2. Any root times itself is just whatever the value is under the root. That's just times 2, or root 4, which gives you 2. The second set of terms, 2 root 2 times 3 root 3, ends up being 2 times 3, which is 6, and root 2 times root 3, which is root 6. The third set of terms here is 3 root 3 times 2 root 2, and again, 3 times 2 gives me 6, and Root 3 times root 2 gives me root 6. And then the last term is 3 root 3 times 3 root 3. And so that's going to be subtract 9 root 9. And again, as I said earlier, a root times itself gives me the value that's under the root. So let's write that out. So we get 8 minus 6 root 6 plus 6 root 6 minus 9 times 3. And you can see that these two middle terms cancel out because one is subtracted and one is added. So we just get 8 minus 27, which is a nice negative 19. Which leaves us with adding and subtracting radicals. First thing we need to note is like radicals are radicals that have the same number under the radical symbol. Only like radicals can be added or subtracted from each other. We cannot combine radicals that do not simplify have the same value under the radical. Let's look at a couple of examples with the following property in mind. The property I want you to keep in mind is the fact that b times root a plus c times root a is equal to, I can add those coefficients together, b and c times root a. So 9 root 7 minus 3 root 7, I go 9 minus 3 root 7. Gives me 6 root 7. In the case of B, this looks a little more confusing, but remember, we want to be able to try to simplify these first. Always try to simplify first. What that means is 5 root 8 can be written as 5 root 4 times 2, and 18 can be written as 9 times 2, minus 2 root 2. And that gives me 5 times 2 root 2 plus 3 times 3 root 2 
minus 2 root 2, which gives me coefficients of 10, 9, and negative 2. And because they all have the same root, it gives me 